welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I'm your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we got a magnificent smorgasbord of fantasy news to get through, and let's go ahead and jump on in. Now, I know what you're thinking. Daniel, why aren't you wearing the suit? Where is the jacket, Daniel? I want to be comfy today. It's cold out. It's finally sweater weather. Let me wear a sweater, okay? It's the only time I'll ever do it, I promise. That being pushed to the side, let's go ahead and jump into our first piece of fantasy news of the day. That being our sneak peek look into the Wheel of Time TV show with a little bit of props, a little bit of behind the scenes look for Emmons Field. This was posted on the Watt on Prime Twitter account and it was just showing us a book which then pans away as we get unveiled that looks like some villages, some thatch roofs. It's pretty accurate, it's pretty exciting. It's not the biggest, most in-depth first look, but this production has already shared far more with its fans than most people have any right to expect. So it's just nice to get a little more snippets, a little bit here and there. And I'm praying, I'm hoping, I'm dying for a trailer within the next six months. That's the time frame. If we can get a trailer in the next six months, I will be extremely happy. I will post a video of me dancing on the channel to the score provided to the trailer. Whatever. I don't know. Something. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next piece of news here. I haven't done a fantasy news in a minute here, so we're going to play a little bit of catch up, and that is going to be two pieces of quickie trailer news. A battleground trailer for the upcoming Dresden Files book dropped. It looked like your standard book trailer, but with a slightly larger budget. Jim Butcher seems to be able to bring in a little bit of production value. Sometimes book trailers are just like green screen, not much. This is it move forward from here. But this is actually kind of nice, so go ahead and check that out. Though I will say hefty spoiler warning for peace talks even if you are not caught up for the Dresden Files. So be warned as you go into this one. And I'm only covering this because if I don't, people are gonna give me crap for not covering it. The Dune trailer dropped within the last week. Go watch it if you haven't already. I even have my own trailer reaction up on the channel. Boom, right there. You can watch my reaction to the trailer as well. Though judging by the numbers in that video, most of you already have. But let's go ahead and smoothly slide perfect transition, not jarring at all, back into the actual fantasy news here. Starting with an update from Rick Royden, who let us know that the Kane Chronicles are going to be adapted over at Netflix. Yes, not only are the Percy Jackson books looking to be adapted from the author, but now his Kane Chronicles look to be in development as well. At least he has a deal with the Goliath streaming service, Netflix. This is pretty awesome to see an author actually be able to have like a one, two level success. I just really hope the guy gets a solid adaptation for some of his work. I'm not even that big of a fan of him, but he just seems like a nice guy. And I know he has legions of followers who are really interested in seeing one of his works done correctly. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna do a little bit of self promo slash Joe Abercrombie promo news here because tomorrow, actually, oh no, today, the day you are watching this at 3 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be going live with Joe Abercrombie and Stephen Pacey to talk about his upcoming book, The Trouble with Peace. If you'd like to be there for the event, it's going to be through Eventbrite. It's not going to be here on the channel, so just click that link down below and sign on up if you're interested in seeing Abercrombie, his narrator, and myself uh, answer a bunch of questions, talk about audiobooks, his book, book things, fantasy, I don't know, whatever the conversation goes. But speaking of book promotion, that book I just reviewed, book, 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 the <laughs> The original has launched its own Twitter account, so keep an eye on that. I get the feeling something else is going to be happening here alongside this release and book and its reception. Uh, but the collaboration between Brandon Sanderson and Marie Robinette Cowell, apparently I said her name wrong, is out and being received fairly well. So if you'd like to go ahead and check out the first chapter, that's available online. And this just, okay, the reason I'm actually covering this the reason I'm really talking about it is I'm just kind of realizing like for every major book release, we're likely to get more and more new media promotional materials alongside of it. And that makes me excited. I like seeing like them launch a Twitter account, which has the possibility of like doing some strange AR storytelling along those lines or whatever could be put out into this world to just kind of lean into the new media angles for marketing. I mean, we're seeing Christopher Paolini on his YouTube channel do some really interesting stuff for his upcoming book to sleep 
sleep in a sea of stars. Across the board, it seems larger authors especially are starting to get creative in how they're trying to stand out from the competition. And I'm just going to continue to promote that because it's the way to go. In the day and age of seeing like old media striking down YouTubers for no reason and being super protective of their content and resistant to change in all aspects, it's just encouraging to see the individual authors and their smaller publication companies or even occasionally larger ones finally wake up and take the step forward into these new angles for marketing and new possibilities. Quickie news insert here. I wasn't originally sure I was gonna cover this, but I do feel it is important enough now after thinking about it, but I wanna make it absolutely clear that I'm not necessarily jumping to a side and I would recommend people wait to hear more come out or maybe a correction, apology, I'm not sure. Uh, but here's what is known so far. The showrunner behind the upcoming very loose adaptation of Guards Guards posted on Instagram a thank you to a bunch of people involved in his current project. The daughter of Terry Pratchett quickly took to Twitter and said, this is the showrunner of The Watch failing to thank my father. This should tell you everything you need to know. A pretty powerful statement on her thoughts on this upcoming show and one, yeah, it's not the best look. The watch is supposed to be a very loose adaptation, but that doesn't really matter. You should still thank Terry Pratchett if you're thanking everybody, though I could see how this could conceivably just be an oversight, but this does show us there's not exactly smooth feelings across the board for this upcoming adaptation, The Watch, loosely based on Guards Guards. Yeah, I just don't like this stuff, though I do think it's important to cover because it's definitely important for the genre, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. This is gonna be one I expect we have several updates for the future. Are you a Zelda fan? Of course you are, because you're a person of taste and integrity. Well, excitingly, Nintendo has announced Ages of Calamity, set 100 years before The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is going to be the next entry in the franchise, and it looks quite different. There's actually a trailer live right now. I'm sure I'm playing on screen. It shows multiple different types of characters to be played as. I'm really excited for this. Actually, okay, okay. Unpopular opinion time. I didn't love Breath of the Wild. <gasps> I know. It just wasn't my favorite. So for me, I'm excited for this because I think Breath of the Wild did a lot for gaming. It's actually like an incredible step forward for open world genre, but I'm probably not going to play this as well. It just was too slow for me. It was not enough to do up front. I need really action packed games. That's actually like a flaw of mine as a gamer, but I do appreciate the art and respect it immensely. I agree with people who say it's like a 10 out of 10 game and I expect Age of Calamity will probably rival it in quality. So go ahead and check that one out if you're excited as a Zelda fan and you own a Switch, because I think that's a requirement. And in a last minute quickie fantasy news update in just ruining the comment section on this video news. The next JK Rowling book that she's writing under a pseudonym uh, has been announced with plot details. Comes out September 15th and apparently is going to have a man who dresses as a woman serial killer character because JK Rowling can't read a room. <laughs> what in the actual f <laughs> Why? Why would you do this? You're a billionaire, are you bored? Even if you agree with her comments, read the room, it's 2020. Can we not have a minute? Can we not have a minute? I don't cover a lot of superhero news because it's just so much of it, it would dominate, but this specifically I did find interesting. One of the producers behind The Flash said for the upcoming Flash movie, which has been delayed and rewritten and delayed and just all kinds of things happening to it, has said that the current plans for the Flash movie that is in development is that it will quote unquote from this title, restart everything. But note what a lot of headlines have dropped. It restarts everything and doesn't forget anything. So just keep that in mind. There is a very large history for specifically the character Flash and the whole Flashpoint power stuff, restarting, refreshing the DC universe. And with the current state of the DCEU, I wouldn't blame them for having some form of restarting event and Flash is the traditional person to go to for it. But you know, this also could be taken way out of context. He could be just kind of saying it in a different meaning. It's just a specific phrasing that very easily could mean 
mean what a lot of people are thinking it's meaning. See what I'm saying there? I also would be surprised if they just restarted the whole DCEU with a Flash movie like off to the side and not making that like a second Justice League or something. But hey, I don't know what they're planning to do. I'm just speculating at this point. Next news. We apparently tomorrow for you, yes, actually tomorrow, I'm remembering this is released next day, are getting an update for the Expanse Book 9. Hmm, that's all we know so far. My face is itchy. Now, for Prince of Persia fans out there, a lot of you are really excited to hear that that new VR game might not be the only thing happening. There's actually going to be essentially maybe a new Prince of Persia title. Well, what's been put out is a remake trailer for The Sands of Time. And a lot of people are thinking, oh, awesome, a latest gen level remake of that classic game. Cannot wait. Here's what it looks like. Um, excuse? That, you just, when you remake a game, you bring it up to the standard of now, now? Did you do it five, 10 years ago and forget you did it? How? I'm genuinely befuddled. There is no other word to describe my reaction to seeing that trailer than befuddled. This comment sums it up perfectly. What, why would you remake something to two generation ago standards? What? But in actual higher quality for a classic level news, uh, V for Vendetta is going to get its first official 4K release for fans of the mega smash hit movie. I mean, I know very few people who haven't seen V for Vendetta. So if that interests you, go ahead and check it out. There will apparently also be other bonus features, but we're not here to talk about much about sci-fi. Dystopian sci-fi, that's a small amount. Let's go ahead and jump back into the fantasy news. And actually, this is gonna be something that just as a technology enthusiast, I'm gonna cover because I just geek out over it a little bit. Apparently, Avatar The Last Airbender will now be accessible for the blind on Netflix. That's so freaking cool. I've seen so many people on Twitter going like, wait, this is a thing? Yeah, it's a thing and it's badass. Yeah, it's just kind of descriptions and along those lines, but that's like, that's incredible to me. And it's just a feature of modern society. I want to praise and put a spotlight on. It makes me happy. Like, oh yeah, more people can enjoy this amazing thing. Fantastic. Not that they couldn't like listen before. I know blind people who do that for movies and shows, but it's just a more immersive way for them to experience it. And I think that's brilliant. And in the final piece of fantasy news we're gonna be covering here today, it seems that Hero Quest is going to be getting another entry into its franchise. I have to say it vaguely like that because you don't know exactly what's happening here. US publisher Avalon Hill 2 teases the return of Hero Quest with something happening on September 22nd, 2020. And what we do know is they filed for a patent for something called Hero's Quest Legacy. So something's up. We don't know exactly what it'll be. And for those of you who are a little bit younger, may not be familiar, Heroes Quest was almost like a Dungeons and Dragons board game that was very accessible and quite popular a while ago. You Gen Zers might not know. I'm a little bit older, so I kind of do because people I'm friends with are a bit older and they introduced me to it. So gatekeeping. <laughs> this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And if you'd like to contribute fantasy news stories for me to cover, go ahead and join the Discord server and throw them on in there. There wasn't like a ton of mega franchise news in this one, but I like these fantasy news where I get to pick up the smaller kind of niche things and bring them to your attention. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Rustage. If you haven't checked out his channel, you definitely should. R-U-S-T-H-A-G.